Hello, in this video I'll be showing you what you can do with cavity masks or grunge maps as they're sometimes known as and how you can create different looks and different textures using those cavity masks or cavity textures. If you want to know how to bake out those textures that was in the previous tutorial so make sure you look that up. I'll put a card in the corner now and in this video I'll be showing those types of things that you can do with those types of masks. Now I keep calling them masks, but they are textures, but they work as masks as well. So they're black and white details. The blacks and the whites control different parts of a mix shader. So just as an intro, what I'm doing, I've got my look dev mode on. So it's sort of like fake lighting or a fake world. And here's my basic principled shader. I've got a normal map going into that. And I've got a bit of bump detail there which is randomly from this big node. I've also got a painted color here. So you can see the paint that's on the here. I've got my cavity mask and that's what it looks like. It's not particularly punchy, so I've put it through a color ramp to increase it and then into the overlay. So that's all the color information there coming through. Base color painted on combined with the cavity mask to give that dark spots and light spots. So that's an obvious use for a cavity mask. You plug it in with an overlay, which I talked about in the last tutorial, but you can go a bit further. I'm going to quickly unplug these. So there's no confusion about this big node set up here. So if all I've got is my color information and my normals, and there's my principal shader now. So I've got this up example up here, but the same cavity mask. And in fact, for now, I'll take out the color as well. So it's just white information. So the principal shader just has white and the normal maps coming into it. So I'm going to mix this with an emission just here. And I'm going to use my cavity mask that I baked out. So that's what it looks like again, into the color ramp with a bit more punch. And I want the dark bits to come out with the emission and the light bits to be the principal shader. So I put it into the factor and let's see what it looks like. And it's got a weird glow to the crevices and I can turn that up and I can also put the bloom on and it gives it a beautiful glow and an ethereal look. Let's just quickly put it onto a black background. I'll quickly change my world so it's completely black and it looks ghostly. And we can turn the bloom up if we want to and make it look weird. So there's the cavity mask working again, and those crevices are actually turning into emissions. So I'll just quickly put it back. So I'm back on my object, and I'm just going to clear that and put it back to where it was. I'll turn the bloom off as well, because that might be distracting. So now I'll show you how I was using it in a weird sort of color way with this sort of node set up here. So the same cavity mask, show you that into the color ramp. It's the same color ramp and I keep duplicating it lots of times and it gives it that bit more punch like I was saying. And I'm using it to mix up these two colors. So this one's really slightly darker than that one. So that's my crevice bit and that's controlled by a noise texture. And it looks like this. So in order to see these textures, I'm pressing control shift with the node wrangler installed and you can then see what the individual textures look like. This one is controlled by a wave texture and you can see the details of the wave there. And that's to try and give it a bark type look. Now, if I plug these into the color of our principal shader and then control shift click on that, you can see I've got a weird sort of bark type of texture. The crevices are slightly darker depending on how much I make this darker. So let's try and make that a bit darker. So I'll quickly duplicate it and I'll use this new one and I'll change it about just a touch. So I'm gonna make it much darker so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'll bring both those and make them dark. And now the cavities are coming out more or they're, they're being pushed in in fact. And let's make this one lighter. So let's duplicate that so I don't make too much of a mess and plug that in. And now I'm making those ones lighter and you can see the effect of the cavity mask and how it's being used. And I'm using noise and wave textures to create this sort of bark effect. But obviously to make a good bark effect, 
I need to put this into the bump, which I can do because I have a bump node just here. So I can go from the color into the height. And now you can see the bump effect. It doesn't look amazing, but it does show a sort of bump. So I was having a bit of fun with these. I'll just put it back to how it was and plug those back in and delete the old ones. So I plugged this into the bump and, and it created a reasonably nice effect. But once I put in my color with my painting, which you can see here with control shift, so there's sort of moss and dark bits and light bits. And I'm using the cavity mask once again, this time as an overlay. So when I'm painting, you've still got the light bits and the dark bits. So from the paint with the cavity mask and then into the principal shader. Let's just quickly hook that up. And there you can see a bit of that bump from my other nodes. From about this sort of distance it's working. And this is just me playing around in just 10 minutes using those cavity masks. But you could spend a lot more time. But remember, it's all down to that cavity mask here. So I'm using the light information from the ridges and the dark information in the crevices and combining different textures to mix them together, using it as that factor. And the factor is a mask, so the black bits is the top one and the white bits is the bottom one. And I've plugged it into a color ramp and then into the roughness and I've switched the color ramp around so that the light bits will be reflective and the dark bits will be rougher because they're in the crevices. And there's my final material. Then with a HDR in the background that looks relatively appropriate, we've got a nice model as you can see there. It may all look fairly confusing, but the principles are always the same with that cavity mask or grunge map, which we baked in the previous episode controlling the mix shaders. So here I've got it controlling these two and here I've got it as an overlay with my paint that I've done here. And earlier I was using it as a strange emission shader mixed with the principal shader. So that's just having a bit of fun. I'm sure you can do a lot better. This is just 10 or so minutes messing about. So you can always get across to the Discord server and show me your work there and show me how you get on with your cavity masks. Thanks for watching, hopefully that wasn't too confusing, and I hope that helps.